got a bone to pick with the radio. Got a thing for all these made up bands. Let's make our way down to the windy land and get there as fast as we can. I've read all the books about the golden days. Hank Willie Wade and Johnny the Loop and Sue. That heard of us on the street of singing and give that folks a chance. Hit record and see what he could do. My big red Quaker When I come at you with my big red lips I shake my fingers, swing my hips It's easy for me to show my love for you
Yes, we were born before the wind Oh, so younger than the sun Yes, the bonnie boat was worn out As we sail into the mist Hark now, hear the sailors cry Smell the sea and feel the sky Let your soul and your spirit fly now As we sail into the mist
Table six. <laughs> we know the table numbers.
blind so I can see the light. Oh, spin old black record so I can see the light. Oh, spin old black record so I can see the
That's an old Towns Van Zandt song for baby towns, baby towns in the crowd. <laughs> He's not a baby anymore. He's not a baby anymore, though, is he? <laughs> All grown up. All right. Everybody, have a good night, y'all.
Friends, is the food good? I see, I got a couple of tables that are like, yeah, and the rest of you are like, can we get one more round of applause for our friends, the Bottle Tops? How amazing was their performance? Oh my goodness, thank you all so much, seriously. One more round of applause, we got to. Good evening and welcome to the 43rd Annual Mayor's Arts Awards. My name is Dwayne Taylor and I will be serving as your Master of Ceremonies for the evening. Thank you. Now before we get started, we want to acknowledge that today we are gathering on the traditional land of the Pawnee, Oto, and Omaha people past and present and we honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout generations. This calls us to commit to continue to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as well. With that being said, what a couple of years it's been, right? Oh my gosh, it is so good to see all of your smiling faces, really. Like, when you, I saw you getting in the line for food and I saw you getting your drinks, it's, the energy starts coming back and you start to feel like it was in 2019 when we could all be in the same place. Now, COVID accelerated changes that were already in progress, both in arts and throughout society. We now know this is a time to value the arts. Whether big or small, sidewalk chalk or community murals, art makes a difference in how we live our lives. The arts creates wellness in our day-to-day -day lives by process processing our lives individually and allowing us to come together collectively as we're finally able to do here tonight. And you know, when we did this last year, Troy, you remember it, we were out at Fiendish Plots. It was me, Troy, our friends from the Basement Creators Network. I mean, we were really out here hoping that you all were watching at home. And boy, were you, seriously. That's one of those changes that COVID accelerated. We learn to move outside of our comfort zones to continue to make a difference. Art allows us to communicate from afar, generating positivity, appreciation, and hope during COVID-19. In times of social injustice and unrest, art amplifies important voices and messages. What we put our energy and efforts into now will affect what our future looks like. So let's find a way a better way together. Now, none of this is possible without any of our sponsors, so we'd like to thank our video sponsors, Emeritus, Dalston Truck Line, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, and Union Bank and Trust, as well as our live stream sponsors, Brian Health, U.S. Property, and Klein Williams, and of course, have you seen where we are? We have to give a big thank you to our wonderful host of the Johnny Carson Center for Emerging Media Arts. Can we get a big round of applause for all of our sponsors? Now, this wouldn't be the Mayor's Arts Awards without hearing from the Mayor. So let's start off our celebration by welcoming our very own Mayor, Lyrian Gaylor Baird. Good evening, everybody. Oh, thank you. You're gonna make me cry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really touched. It's wonderful to be here in person with you all tonight. So many friends, so many people who love Lincoln and love good art. Uh, I want to thank you for coming down to this beautiful Emerging Media Arts Center. Thank you for hosting us. Uh, we are also wanting to say hello to those who are joining virtually in, from home um, for the 43rd Annual Mayor's Arts Awards Celebration. I want to thank the Arts Council team. They're a wonderful team, a dedicated team, a devoted team, responsible for so much good in our community. Thank you to you all. And thank you to their board and all of their supporters. And 
really to all of you in this room for helping to keep the arts alive during a really long year and a half. Um, keeping the arts alive during the past year and a half has demanded so much more than we ever could have imagined it would. Recognizing that, this evening is a tribute not only to specific works of art, but also a tribute to the incredibly resilient and creative and passionate people who are the lifeblood of our arts community. And I want to applaud all of you. Please give yourselves a hand. Our arts community's resilience in the face of a global pandemic uh, became clear to our entire city when back in May of 2020, a series of billboards started popping up all over town. And I remember driving home in the dark along South Street and looking up at one of these brightly lit billboards with two masked-like goddesses with the book ending the words, this too shall pass. And I really appreciated that message on my way home from work each night. Uh, I took comfort in that reminder. And there was Willa Cather speaking to us across time and space on a billboard with a beautiful watercolor and the words from her, there are some things you learn best in calm and some in storm. That took on so much more new truth uh, this past year and a half. And one of the billboards placed near Highway 77 proudly proclaimed, we got this, Lincoln. And I was so taken with that beautiful, positive, colorful image that I made it my Facebook cover page for months. Uh, I thought that was such a wonderful mantra, a rallying cry for our community. And it helped us keep going. Um, spoiler alert, uh, I selected the Lincoln Billboard Art Project as the Mayor's Choice winner this year, and we, we'll hear more about that later, um, that wonderful project um, led by Public Art Lincoln. Yet there's one more thing worth mentioning about the Billboard Project um, as we get this party started tonight, and that is that one of those billboards featured the Blue Jays that you've seen in pictures and maybe in the edible art on your signature drink tonight. Um, that Bluebird, Bluebird Blue Jay billboard, ooh, try and say that a bunch of times fast. <laughs> the Blue Jay billboard read, life finds a way. And that sentiment was tweaked just a bit for the theme of tonight's event, that the arts find a way. Uh, that is exactly what we are celebrating tonight, the resilience of our art, our arts community, and our artists. Lincoln is a community that loves the arts, and we thirst for theater and dance and concerts, the first Friday gallery art walks, and our museum's offerings. The arts connect us to each other and the world, and thanks to the creativity and hard work of artists and arts organizations, the arts did find a way to reach us and reach our hearts this past year. Tonight, you'll see many examples of how great ideas and community support came together to create magical events this past year. And Lincoln put an exclamation point on an extraordinary year back on July 1st out at Pioneers Park when 6,000 people gathered outdoors for a free performance by the American Ballet Theater Company, the very first location for their nationwide tour. What a point of pride. And this historic performance um, brought national media attention to our lead center for the arts and to our community and to our love for the arts. I think it spoke so well about all of you and all of us here who call Lincoln home. It also just said, we're not just surviving this pandemic, we are thriving in spite of it all. The arts find a way. So tonight's celebration also represents an historic transition. It's the first one in 20 years without Deb Weber at the helm of the Lincoln Arts Council. And Deb has led this organization with vision and passion and commitment 
like no other. Her legacy includes the Lincoln Arts Festival, which celebrated its 20th anniversary this past summer, includes the Upstart program, which has given countless young people access to the arts, and it includes two successful public art projects, Tour to Lincoln and Stories of Home, which inspired more interest in the arts. She worked with Americans for the Arts, on five stu studies on the economic impact of the arts in our community, demonstrating with data that the arts mean business. The Lincoln Arts Council and our entire community are stronger because of Deb Weber's leadership. Deb is enjoying this evening from home tonight and probably is hoping that I finish talking about her really soon. But uh, Deb, on behalf of our entire community, I wanna thank you and wish you congratulations on your well-deserved retirement. Um, the Arts Council was fortunate to have Deb's leadership for two decades, and it's also incredibly fortunate to have found an outstanding successor in the new executive director, Troy Gagner, who I'm proud to call both a colleague and a friend. Thank you, Troy. So thank you again to all the sponsors and to all the supporters who are making tonight's events really, truly special. And congratulations to all the award winners tonight. Um, have a wonderful evening celebrating the arts and can, helping them to continue to find ways not only to survive, but thrive in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thank you. Maybe we have one more round of applause for our mayor. Now, as we do every year at the Mayor's Arts Awards, let's take a few moments to remember our friends in the arts and humanities who have passed since we gathered at the event last year.
Though they're no longer here with us, their work and their inspiration live on through the work we do every single day. Now, I've got to tell you, we've got an art auction happening right now. It's an online art auction, and I've been told this one's staying open until 9 p.m. tonight. And it's happening right now. 25 artists have painted a work based on tonight's theme of the arts find a way. The piece you see on the screen behind me, this was painted by local artist Jen Landis with her company, Pinkern Girls, helped bring engaging art opportunities to the Lincoln Arts Festivals this past summer. Jen is with us here at the Johnny Carson Center tonight. Thank you, Jen, for offering up your time and talent and to her company, Pinkern Girls. Friends, I'm not lying, this art is absolutely phenomenal. And all night long, you've got an opportunity to get your hands on it. Now, the easiest way to get to the auction is by holding your phone's camera up to this gigantic QR code behind me, and that'll take you right to the auction. Most of the time, I can't figure out the QR code stuff anyway, so here's the shortcut, biddingowl.com biddingowl.com and just search for the Mayor's Arts Awards. You can do it either way, but look at this art. It's absolutely phenomenal. Again, this is going to remain active through the end of tonight's live stream. And if you're the winning bidder, winning bidder, if you're, yeah, if you're the winning bidder, words are tough right now, we're going to contact you later this week to arrange pickup or delivery of your choice. Now, speaking of works of art, how about this gigantic work of art? Have y'all seen this yet? Take a look. Life finds a way. Mayor Gaylor Baird already mentioned the Mayor's Choice Award winner, the Public Art Lincoln Billboard Project. This beautiful piece is the actual billboard created by local artist Danny Renault for that project. Like the mayor, we're incredibly inspired by the messages on those billboards, so we built our awards around Danny's theme. Danny's history with the Arts Council goes back a little ways. He was an emerging artist at the 2019 Lincoln Arts Festival and winner of the Best of Nebraska Award at the 2021 Festival. And he graciously agreed to create hand-painted awards for each of our nominees tonight. We're so happy Danny's able to join us. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Danny, where are you at? You ever think you'd see your face on something as large as the billboard you created? <laughs> Amazing work. One more round of applause for Danny. This is phenomenal. Now, Danny isn't the only billboard artist with us tonight. I'd like to give a special shout out to Wendy Jane Bantam, Andy Dillahay, Wes Staley, Ian Vesper, Samantha Wick, and Aileen Wiles. They're all with us tonight as well. How about a big old round of applause for Danny and all of our other amazing artists whose messages inspire hope during a very difficult time. Whew. We got the formalities out the way. How about we say hello to our award winners this year, huh? You'll be introduced to each honoree by a video created by Andrew Fuller, Diane Gonzalez, and LNKTV. We'll introduce a few winners at a time, then we'll bring them up to the stage to receive their awards. Now, friends here in person, I will say we have tons of folks watching at home, so we wanna make this as absolutely wild for them as possible. We wanna let them feel that they're in the room. So when it's time to clap, you see an artist you recognize, get absolutely raucous with it, because that's gonna help our friends at home feel that same energy, good? That's that energy that I'm talking about. All right, fittingly, our first award is the Mayor's Choice Award sponsored by Doug and Mary Campbell. As you well know now, this year, Mayor Lyrian Gaylor Baird is honoring the Public Art Lincoln Billboard Project. The Lincoln Billboard Art Project was created to unite, support, inspire, and bring joy and healing to our community and provide financial support to artists during the pandemic through a privately supported community art project. Now, let's hear more about the Billboard Art Project.
good about being able to do this in the community. We felt like the community would embrace it. Artists seemed very interested in it. Um, so I think there was just a, a feeling at that time within the community of wanting to do something that was just positive, solely positive, solely something that would, would lift people up. You know, from beginning to end, it was a positive experience for me. I felt really good about what we did. I felt really good about how they looked, and I felt really good about helping artists in many ways, you know, with the, the stipends and also with increased exposure. And I just love driving around and seeing them. Billboards were so popular. I mean, they stayed up far longer than we intended them to, and I think that was because we were hearing that people enjoyed seeing them. Lamar was getting good feedback on the billboards. And um, yeah, I think it was kind of meant to be. It was just the right time. This project, I think, really pushed me through a difficult time. The positivity that was generated by it sustained me through it and then um, you know and then I was able to purchase Danny's beautiful original work and it hangs in my kitchen so <laughs> it sustains me every day. <laughs>
University of Nebraska, you know, was very committed to making sure that we continued to fulfill our mission as an institution and do it safely. And thanks to, you know, the University of Nebraska Medical Center and the, the city of Lincoln and, and the, the administration of the University of Nebraska, we found a way to reopen. And we were the first major university performing arts center to reopen in the nation. And what a great celebration and 6,000 people that came out to see ballet. And if that doesn't tell you that Lincoln and Nebraska love the arts, I don't know what will. Knowing that, you know, if you work hard and you have faith and that you have arts at, a, at, a, at the core part of, of, of your values and, and, and making sure that you keep that creative spirit and having the arts as a center point in, in your life and in the community that good things will happen. A big congratulations to the Lead Center of Performing Arts. The Lead Center was not the only arts organization to find creative ways to bring the arts to Lincoln during the pandemic. Lux Center for the Arts staff and board wanted to keep canceled summer camp teachers and interns this past summer. It didn't seem the right thing to do to create more unemployment in our community. Education Director Lindsay Clausen devised a project inspired by the drive through Wildlife Safari and staff dubbed it Art Safari. It was a drive through or walk through safari experience outdoors in the Lux parking lot. The artists and residents and teachers of the Lux work hard to create all sorts of whimsical sea creatures and other features such as a waterfall, they have like a sea serpent and, and plenty more. The art safari installation went on for 10 days and nearly 1,500 people got a chance to experience it. It was uplifting and a chance for people who were in quarantine to do something safe and most of all fun. Let's take a look at Art Safari, honored for the Outstanding Art event, sponsored by Mark and Kathy LeBaron. Art Safari was sort of, um, you know, born out of trying to adapt to the pandemic. Um, right as everything was closing down, we were starting to look for opportunities for parents and families to still be able to go out and do things, but in a safe way. So I would describe Art Safari as a, an immersive arts experience uh, for all ages that you could drive through or walk through. We really tried to transform the space so it didn't feel like anywhere you'd been before. Since we canceled our summer camps, uh, we had all these artists on staff and we wanted to keep them employed throughout the pandemic. And, um, you know, aside from being this great opportunity for families to come out, it also kept our artists employed throughout a time when a lot of people were losing their jobs. The mission of the Lux is to bring arts and arts activities to Lincoln as a whole. And um, we thought during the pandemic, this was a perfect time to provide an outdoor activity that was fun, quirky, exciting. You didn't know what to expect from the Art Safari. But Lindsay found this unique way to um, speak to the community and have a community event. And it was um, amazingly successful. People really found a lot of joy in it. Continually found joy. I continually found hope. I continue, continually found a way to just keep going because of my job. I think for me, the arts have provided hope uh, and, you know, optimism and a point of positive focus throughout the pandemic.
Would our honorees from Public Art Lincoln, the Lead Center, and the Lux please come to the stage to receive your awards? While our honorees make their way to the stage, don't forget 25 amazing pieces of artwork are up at our auction right now. If you haven't already, biddingow.com, and that's gonna allow you to get into this amazing auction with these pieces of art. I mean, there's great pieces like this one by Cole Shoemaker. He's one of our four emerging artists at this year's Lincoln Arts Festival. Since moving the Arts Festival downtown, LAC has worked harder to provide opportunities for up-and-coming local artists like Cole. In addition to our emerging artists, for the first time ever, the Arts Festival included a maker's market in partnership with the South of Downtown Community Development Organization. An additional nine artists were featured in the maker's market. A total of 13 local artists received their first festival opportunity at the festival in June. Cole is with us here tonight. Where are you at, Cole? Cole's here somewhere. Can we give Cole a big old round of applause? Go, Cole! And can we get another wild round of applause for our arts winners? And now we shift gears from arts organizations to artists. Our award for artistic achievement literature is sponsored by Commercial Investment Properties. Our winner, Mary Pfeiffer. Mary is a community organizer and activist and the author of 10, count them, 10 books, including two New York Times bestsellers, Reviving Ophelia and The Shelter of Each Other. In her volumes, she addresses significant societal and global topics, ranging from challenging cultural problems and human developmental issues to her deep concern for the planet. Let's meet Mary. My goal when I write and publish a book is the same goal I had as a therapist, which is to be useful and helpful and to help people figure out new ways, fresh ways to deal with the perennial human problems. Every book, there'll be something I'm trying to figure out. And at some point, I'll realize you know, I bet a lot of other people are trying to figure this out too. And if I could figure it out for myself and share that thinking, it might help other people figure it out. Writing is this rare pleasure where on one hand, you can be totally alone and in control of your product. You don't have any bosses or supervisors or anything like that, at least not at first. And on the other hand, it's really stimulating because you're always at the edge of your intellectual envelope. last year writing has been such a blessing for me because it gave me a way to feel connected to the world and productive and um, 
energized, greatest gift a person can have is the gift of freedom for self-expression. Can we get another round of applause for Mary? She said a few things that are gonna stick in my head when I sleep tonight, seriously. Our next honoree is Lisa Lockman, a professor of art and art department chairperson at Nebraska Wesleyan University. Lisa maintains an active practice as an artist and has completed numerous residencies and fellowships and shown her work in more places than we can list here. Many of you here in the audience have probably noticed pieces of Lisa's work on your tables. Thank you so much for sharing those with us, Lisa. She's also a team co-leader of an initiative to develop a University Place Arts District for the Fine and Performing Arts as part of Nebraska Wesleyan's just launched strategic plan. Let's meet our honoree for Artistic Achievement Visual Arts, Lisa Lockman. This award is sponsored by Allo. There are two main influences in my artwork, and one is technology. I'm interested in what's current in the art field and current in ceramics, but I'm also deeply interested in family history and ancestry. What I really enjoy is making sculptural works, and I make small pieces that make a larger whole. Students every semester are doing something that surprises me, something that challenges me, and it's just, it's energizing. It doesn't matter what I expect, what I think they're going to do. They can take the ass assignment and make it their own. So they end up teaching me a lot. I think it's really important to let the art take you where it's going. Sometimes I have an idea and it completely changes midstream, and I have to recognize that and go with it. always interesting to see other artists and sometimes we get in our own little community and we're very familiar with that and so it's nice to get out of that comfort zone and see how other parts of the world operate. I wasn't able to make artwork like I would have liked to. I mean the time to teach during COVID has been it's taken a lot of energy and a lot of time and so there hasn't been the kind of time and energy that I need for my own artwork but again I've been planning and I've been thinking and I've been making small samples but I think retreating into the studio when I could helps you re-energize and that's really important for any artist. Congratulations, Lisa. Our next award is Artistic Achievement Youth. Sponsored by Filament Essential Services, and our honoree is Yanori Ferguson. Yanori is the drum major of her high school marching band, and in February of this year, Yanori was selected from candidates across the state as a recipient of the Nebraska Young Artist Award from the Hickson Lead College of Fine and Performing Arts. She was selected for the NMEA All-State Orchestra as principal flute, making her the top-ranked flutist in the state of Nebraska. Additionally, she was recently selected to be a member of the flute section for the Lincoln Youth Symphony. Now, let's meet Yanori.
not only was I a part of something bigger than just my school, but I had put a lot of effort into refining my skills. It's interesting how you can have something, a two-dimensional sheet of paper, um, evolve into a model that's really intricate. see myself exploring different cultures and learning about different areas of art and seeing how I can get inspired and inspire others in the process. I would say my own inspirations would be, I would say my inspirations would be the people who surround me um, day to day, my flute teacher, my grandparents um, who are very supportive and um, also the music that I listen to and the art that I see around town. I suppose I believe in a community where everyone is giving to each other and building each other up, adding value to each other because I mean I want to treat others how I'd like to be treated. Not only have the arts given me a creative outlet for uh, relieving stress, but they've also given me a way to express love to the people around me. Congratulations, Yanori. Now let's meet the last of our Artistic Achievement Award honorees. The next award for Artistic Achievement Performance is sponsored by Myron and Karen Gagner. Our honorees, the Kokio Taiko Drumming Group, is a troupe of highly skilled mu musicians who perform and promote this unique and time-honored tradition of Japanese music. Their high-octane performances combine both a powerful physicality with dramatic rhythmic pieces that vibrate literally to your soul. Having played with the community-based Waidoko group in Japan, Kokyo's leader Marine continued this wonderful combination of exercise and music after returning to America. Kokyo Taiko was recently featured prominently on national TV during the Olympic swim trials in Omaha. Let's hear more from Kokyo Taiko. a great way to um, combine movement with music and I love feeling the sound and it just goes into your inner core. There really isn't anything else that I know that's like it that really has that energy and power and I also but even though I keep saying power I also love the grace aspect of it too. I'm, I'm a dancer as well, so I really enjoy, it's just as much a dance as it is playing an instrument. So the combination of that is what is so unique and really my favorite part. I think there needs to be a connection with not just the music, and what we are doing, but it shows people that Japanese culture has a lot to offer. And it's not just the samurai and the ninjas that they're used to, or, or anime. There's so much more to it. We were able to get together and practice, you know, when 
we were all, you know, being quarantined and being safe because we could stand six feet apart and play. And it was a little challenging, but it was awesome to have that connection still um, and be able to make art together. My group and my people were flexible, were able to go along with the best recommendations. And so I appreciate having um, the people around me who are doing the right thing. Would Kokio Taiko, Mary Pfeiffer, Lisa Lockman, and Yanori Ferguson please come to the stage and receive your awards? As a reminder, we do have an art auctioning happening right now, biddingal.com. Just search for the Mayor's Arts Awards. And if you're like, ah, I've got plenty. I've just started hanging art on my walls. Holidays are coming up. If you want to gift your guy, head to biddingowl.com, search the Mayor's Arts Awards. Easy way to get yourself an amazing piece of art created specifically for our event tonight. I'm going to get out the way. <laughs> Now, the piece that we're featuring on the screen now is by local artist and dear friend of the Lincoln Arts Council, Tom Myers. Tom has worked with LAC's Upstart's arts engagement programming for several years now. In 2020, Tom Myers designed and painted a 40-foot mural in Campbell Elementary, celebrating a double anniversary, Campbell's 25th and Beethoven's 250th. Tom worked with students across all grades to build ideas and elements for the mural, which was helped along by student spectators who Tom encouraged to pick up a brush. You may have also caught Tom's amazing 3D chalk art at last summer's Lincoln Arts Festival. Thank you for being here, Tom, and thanks for all you do for the Lincoln Arts Council. Tom, can you raise your hand so we can say hi? A round of applause for Tom. Now earlier, I mentioned Kokio Taiko's performances, high octane, literally vibrate to your soul, remember that whole bit? You're gonna experience that firsthand right now. And I'm telling you, here's a fair warning, friends. It's about to get loud. I give you Kokio Taiko.
So remember when I was like, yeah, you know, you'll literally feel it. I wasn't lying, was I? <laughs> it was, as soon as that first note hit, it's like, I'm awake. Hello, I'm fully here. A big thank you again to Kokio Taiko. What a phenomenal performance we got tonight. Now let's meet our Lincoln Community Foundation Arts for Kids Awards honoree, The Bay and Rabble Mill. The Bay is a home for misfits in Lincoln, a safe place to go, people who care, and something to do. Its programs aim to help young people dream bigger. Art at the Bay focuses on practical skills in high demand fields, such as digital art, content creation, computer science, and gaming, all while keeping a focus on culture and community. And coming next year, Bay High. Bay High is a high school focus program in partnership with LPS that creates upward mobility and opportunity for young creators. It will prepare and equip students to be innovators in the progressive world of entrepreneurship, emerging technology, and content creation. Rooted in the creative disciplines of skateboarding, music, fashion, and digital art. Let's check out the Bay.
are providing this space for people, this space for young people where they can be themselves. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, who you love, you are welcome. We celebrate that individuality and we really try to build self-confidence and making sure people feel valued and that they are important. We have been focused on creating a space for young people to follow their curiosities and find those creative outlets that they want to pursue. We just want to ignite their curiosities and their passions and then push them into the direction that they want to go in. One of our core values is dream differently. So we were like, how can we dream differently about what skate camp means? And so we even threw some art challenges into skate camps. At this point, art and creativity is just like second nature to our Bay kids. I think we've all turned to art this past year and it's actually made the Lincoln community more connected in collaborating and looking out for who, who needs help, who needs a boost, who needs an opportunity. And so if we can do that through art and specifically music, I think we're doing something right. A big congratulations to the Bay and Rabble Mill. Hey, speaking of high schools and LPS, our next honoree has been bringing the arts to LPS students for years and has been integral to the expansion of LAC's Upstart programming. Lorinda Rice is our honoree for the Gladys Lux Education Award. Lorinda Rice is a longtime dedicated art educator and administrator here in Lincoln and Nebraska. She's served learners and educators in various roles during her career in both Columbus and Lincoln. Her current role is as curriculum specialist in visual arts for Lincoln Public Schools. Lorinda has served in multiple roles for the Nebraska Art Teachers Association and recently completed a four-year commitment with the National Art Education Association as the Supervision and Administration Division Director. Lorinda is an impassioned visual arts supporter. Her dedication to visual arts is no doubt a lifelong commitment and her impact will be felt for years and generations to come. Let's get to know a little more about Lorinda. It's about understanding and knowing new ideas in art education, being connected to those, doing the research on it, and then helping teachers um, break that down. What could it look like in their classroom? How would they do this, these different things with their students so that students have a positive experience in art? So right now we're using themes or topics to introduce um, an idea to students, to say what could this topic have as a possibility and where would you take it as an individual rather than everyone creating the same um, Starry Starry Night artwork that I used to teach. A good teacher is curious. A good teacher is one that's there for their students, one that's um, looking for ways to support and encourage and um, believe in students to say, I'm here for you wherever you are. We can get there and we can make your version of your story beautiful.
I really am trying to make sure that um, I try to give myself an opportunity to um, go there, reconnect to who I am and why that's important, and um, see the world in new ways. Art is a way to look closely and observe what's going around you. In the past year, um, we've really used that as a space of where is your comfort level? How can you use it as a social and emotional space to feel um, some connection and some um, satisfaction or comfort in our world? You could say our next honoree has a big old heart. In fact, he's the heart of the art. Our honoree for the Heart of the Arts Award, sponsored by Runza Restaurants, is Pepe Fierro. Pepe started the Bike Kitchen and his restaurant, Pepe's Bistro, has hosted Second Friday Artists Opening for up and coming artists with live music for over 13 years. He goes out of his way to support artists of color. Being the son of an immigrant, he knows how important it is to give someone a leg up. He's hosted the Art Bus, been a vendor at the Lincoln Bicycle Art Tour, gave away cucumber lemonade at Porch Art Palooza, and will serve burritos at Live Yes's grand opening at their new location. As one person commented on our Facebook page and mentioned him, they said, Pepe's curry burritos are a work of art. <laughs> Let's hear more from the man with the big heart himself, Pepe Fierro. I've been doing Second Fridays since Havelock, so since 2008. So I host local artists and local musicians. And when I say, when people say arts, I'm, I mean arts across the, the field. Whether it's playing music, doing poetry night, or you know, visual. You know, you go from being homeless in 2004 to owning your own business in 2008. I think that speaks for itself. Then 2010, starting the bike kitchen. It's just, it gave me the, um, the confidence that I needed, you know, knowing that it's okay to do things and trust the process and you're in a good town. It's important for me to be involved with the community because it's the community that brought me in and accepted me. You know, I tell people you don't want to go in and say, I'm doing this for the community because that becomes about yourself. So you go in and become part of the community. And uh, in a sense, you're not going in to change it, the community is going to change you. With the arts, I was able to reach out to people and say, we need to do this, we need to do that, and uh, there's been a, well, the uh, Second Friday Art Walks in the community, and it just helped me refresh and realize that things are okay. Congratulations, Pepe. With the folks from the Bay, Lorinda Rice and Pepe Fierro, please come to the stage to receive your awards. All right, I'm gonna say this again. That art auction that's happening, 
All you got to do is hop in there, 25 amazing pieces. And if you're one of those that likes to see it in your hands, right up close and personal, directly above us, right here on our second floor, just along the wall where you'll see our big billboard, you will also see the 25 pieces of art that are up for auction right now. And we're getting near the end, and this is going to be some of your last chances to bid on all of this amazing art from artists like Peggy Gomez. Peggy is a past Mayor Arts Awards winner and the owner of Gomez Art Supply. She's also founded Tugboat Gallery, the unassuming gallery that sits in the heart of downtown above Gomez Art Supply. Tugboat provides showing opportunities for emerging artists as well as established professionals. As a non-commissioned gallery, its goal is to exhibit high quality, exciting artwork. And wouldn't you know it, Peggy's here with us tonight as well. Can we give a big round of applause and say thank you to our friend Peggy. <laughs> now we transition from heart of the arts to benefactor of the arts award sponsored by Rembolt Lukey. Moved by the story of Dr. LaFleche as a pioneering native doctor, Larry Small saw her as an inspiration and a role model. He felt that the best way to reach people with this story was through art, specifically sculpture. After he purchased one of Benjamin Victor's chief standing bear maquettes, he educated himself on Nebraska native history beyond the story of standing bear and learned about trailblazer, Dr. Susan LaFleche Picot. Over time, as he invited Indian Commission staff and friends to view his maquette, he expressed a desire to honor Dr. LaFleche in a similar fashion as Standing Bear, stating, now is the right time. Executive Director Judy Gayashkabas arranged for a meeting with artist Benjamin Victor, where they agreed to a sculpture of Dr. LaFleche should be created adding to the cultural diversity of Lincoln. It was decided that Centennial Mall was an ideal location for the sculpture to inspire visitors and serve as a worthy recognition and honoring of this historic figure. Last month, the sculpture was unveiled on Indigenous Peoples Day with descendants of Dr. LaFleche in attendance. Let's meet our benefactor of the arts, Larry Small. She really was working against all the odds. She gave up a lot to get an education. I mean, you just gotta be so impressed with that drive. And, and even when she graduated and has her medical degree, now she's in a position uh, to, to be there on the East Coast and, and work in, in that society and you know live well. Absolutely not. Got on that train, went right back to the reservation, and she spent her rest of her life there. This was just, I think, celebrating both the Native American and women, and hopefully that uh, means something to young girls that see this. Maybe they go so far as to reflect on their own lives or maybe their children's lives. Yeah, I'll give that inspiration. And, you know, I, if, you, if you take the time to read the story, uh, you know, some will do that. If you get that feeling from it, um, that's a positive and, and it, uh, hopefully it enriches them.
during the pandemic, during all this time, you know, you're still in, in, involved with these things. And so the arts became the, the vehicle, the, the, the means by which you do get involved with other folks. That's finding a way to be more engaged and happy about things. Congratulations, Larry. Our next honoree, Colleen Eubanks, has been teaching, creating, and volunteering in artistic roles for over 50 years. She's been an instructor and consultant, and especially cherishes the time spent in helping other artists in her community. For the past 45 years, Colleen has been active in the Lincoln art scene as a teacher and artist. She's been a board member of the Lincoln Arts Council and is proud to be a founder of the Lincoln Arts Festival in 2000. The Lincoln Arts Festival has continued to grow in popularity since those early years. Colleen's own artistic creations have won many awards over the years through her participation in regional art fairs and festivals. Let's meet Colleen Eubanks, our honoree for Legacy of the Arts, sponsored by Legacy Retirement Communities. Congratulations, Colleen. Here at the Lincoln Arts Council, we know a little something about working backstage. I mean, it's literally what we do every day. Our job is to support this city's amazing arts community and shine the spotlight on those artists and art organizations making this community the wonderful place it is. Our final honoree knows just a bit about this as well. The Art Scene Backstage Award, sponsored by Susan Sennert Stewart, goes to Arts Incorporated. The hardworking staff at Arts Incorporated manages the Lincoln Municipal Band, Nebraska Jazz Orchestra, Nebraska Brass Quintet, Nebraska Symphony Chamber Orchestra, Nebraska Trumpet Ensemble, Capital Jazz Society, Thursday Night Music Series, the Gateway Vista Outdoor Series, and 
the Lincoln Community Foundation Gardens Performance Series. Because of their behind the scenes efforts during the pandemic, over 100 live music events were broadcast online, bringing much needed beauty to people everywhere. Over the past 34 years, Arts Incorporated has grown from a one-man operation in a small backroom office to a staff of seven part-time employees working to keep over 100 musicians working in its many performing groups. Let's celebrate the folks backstage at Arts Incorporated. found that doing things that I'm involved with that interest me, the things especially that uh, I have a connection to musically, um, those are things that I want to help um, continue and see grow. We try really hard to do that. Um, we try to be um, very professional in how we work with them and how we communicate with them and um, try not to have three trombone players show up when you only needed two and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I think uh, the musicians in the community appreciate that. So we ended up doing close to, well, more than 100 different events this last year with a number of groups, um, nearly 100 different musicians got a chance to play and get paid. Um, and really it was just because we were in the right place at the right time and my business was situated in such a manner that there are all these different groups and things that we could do. We got a lot of positive feedback, both from the musicians that had an opportunity to play and the people that were watching it. The nice thing about the live streams is that um, people from around the country and even the world were able to watch and you know, could log in and say what they thought about it. And uh, that was a real positive experience for us. I remember a friend of mine in Omaha that said, thanks man, he says, you're the only gigs I got. A big congratulations to our friends at Arts Incorporated. Folks, this is the end, but we still have one award left. As the mayor mentioned at the beginning of our program, we recently celebrated the retirement of our longtime Arts Council Executive Director, Deb Weber. We did sort of. Like Arts Incorporated, Deb is the epitome of the hard work that goes on backstage. Her dedication to the organization and complete lack of ego means that over the course of several months, she threatened the new executive director, Troy Gagner, with bodily harm if he did anything big to celebrate her retirement, especially at the Mayor's Arts Awards. Well, thankfully, Troy, Deb is watching from home. Hi, Deb. You're safe for now, we can guarantee that. Deb's accomplishments are far too many to list, but we wanted to share a few legacy projects that have paved the way for the Lincoln Arts Council and made it what it is today. Deb brought the Lincoln Arts Council Festival to life 21 years ago. This event has become a premier event in Lincoln, celebrating artists from all disciplines and giving patrons a true festival experience. This year marked the 20th anniversary. 
Events like the Lincoln Arts Festival helped fund the program Deb initiated to bring the joy of arts education to underserved areas of our community. Leveraging her relationship with Lincoln Public Schools, Deb created the program known today as Upstart. This program has grown over the years, giving countless children, teenagers, and young adults access to the arts. The Upstart program has changed lives as the creative spirit was nourished for so many of these students. And Deb didn't stop there. She created a flourishing partnership with LPS Pathfinder, which works with incarcerated youth at the Lancaster Youth Services Center. This program has touched many lives and has helped incarcerated youth have hope in themselves and in their future. Deb is a strong advocate for the arts and has worked on several public art projects, including Tour de Lincoln and Stories of Home. These projects spur more interest in the arts and broaden the reach of the Lincoln Arts Council. So Deb, sorry to put you in the spotlight. I mean, not really, you deserve all of this for real. But you know, we know how much you love Danny's work. So we had Danny create an additional award for this year's Mayor's Arts Awards just for you, Deb. And Troy's going to bring it to you just so you know when it's all clear and safe. Can we please get one big heartfelt round of applause for Deb Weber? And it looks like we do have three awards still to take pictures of. So would our award winners that did not get to take their photos please step forward real quick and let's give them a big round of applause for their patience. I know you're sitting there like, mine. And again, friends, that auction, those art pieces are directly above us. So if you get a chance, head upstairs, take a look at those pieces of art. There are 25 of them, and they were all custom made just for you. Our bartenders still look like they're there. Make sure you tip them very well. If you grab yourself a drink, I know y'all arts people, so y'all know how it goes, but please do. Folks, thank you so much for joining us to celebrate the arts in our community. And thank you to all of our honorees for the hard work, sacrifice to make our community a more beautiful, connected, and caring place. Can we please give all of our honorees a big round of applause? Also, an incredible thank you to Mayor Lyrian Gaylor Baird, the Johnny Carson Center for Emerging Media Arts, Basement Creators Network, LNK TV, Kokio Taiko, The Bottle Tops, UNL Dance, and everyone involved in the help with tonight's event. A big thank you to the Nebraska Arts Council and the Nebraska Cultural Endowment for their ongoing support of the Lincoln Arts Council and the arts community in Lincoln. And finally, thank you for joining us. It's seriously so good to see you again. Without you, there is no Mayor's Arts Awards, nor would there be an amazing arts community here in Lincoln to celebrate. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you next year.